welcome to the PCR London Vials 2024. I am Dr. Sengo Duvelu from Chennai, India. Today I have eminent cardiologists from India, my colleagues Dr. Harish Mehta from SL Rahija Fortis Hospital, Mumbai, and I have Dr. Viveka Kumar from Max Hospital, Delhi. Today we are going to talk about an important subset of uh, analy, which is a small analy, which is uh, actually a contributes a significant amount of the population. Uh, which is again uh, going to be challenging to treat. Uh, so we have different uh, valve types and we have different anatomy. So to decide on which is, would be the best option for each anatomy, we have these kind of uh, discussions. So let me start with Harish. Uh, how do you define a small analy? So small analy by definition is anything less than 430 millimeter square area or 23.4 is the perimeter, the, the annular diameter. So anything less than that contributes as a small annuli. And the interesting feature is that in uh, our country, in our continent, the, the percentage of such annuli are much larger. It varies anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. And in women, it goes up to 80 percent. So we have a large population of small annuli. And uh, the small annuli, again, uh, the, 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 the choice differs between different types of valves. So what do you think of the valve choices in this? Uh, how is it different from the a large analy or different manner? Yeah, so I think that's a very good question because if you look at the longevity of the valve and the hemodynamic parameters, they largely depend on the effective orifice area. So the larger valve you put, the better long-term outcome would be. Hemodynamics will be better. So small annuli, whether it is the native or de novo valve or the you know previous implanted valve, if they are smaller, inherently they will will not have a good outcome because the hemodynamics will be much worse, the post-procedure, the gradients will be higher. So it is very important that, you know, they used to be surgically, root enhancement used to be done, or you put a valve which you can get a bigger size in first place, like supraannular valve. So that will be choice, you know, treatment of choice compared to the, you know, intraannular valves. And coming back to you, Harish, uh, the, the definition of small analy, uh, do you think the 430 is a cutoff uh, applies to every geography? Or? No, I feel that 430 has been a universal definition. But in our country, as I told you, we see generally much smaller. We see less than 400 also. So most of our small annuli are generally less than 400. And we have ultra small annuli as well. Yeah, and absolutely. We don't have specific devices. Yeah. yeah. So, so can you tell me more about uh, the valve choices, supra annula versus uh, intra annula devices? Yeah, so there was inherent, you know, the, the logical explanation was that if it is a small annulus, then the outcome with the intra-annular valve not be good because you end up putting a smaller valve like our surgeons used to do. So we had a trial which we call SMART trial, which showed comparison of hemodynamics and secondary endpoints of effective orifice area and the degeneration of the valve. These were the endpoints and they looked at that the valves which is supraannular in the small annuli, which Harish has said that the effective orifice area is less, you know, less than 430 millimeter square. In those situations, the supraannular valve did fairly well in hemodynamic parameters, effective orifice area compared to the intraannular valve. But so predominantly you have the self-expanding valves, which are supraannular, except for Navitor group, which is intraannular, and the other balloon expandable valve. So we should try and put bigger orifice area and that can be achieved only by supraannular valve. So I think the importance of effective orifice area is very particular to avoid a, a PPM and I think we have seen that any inactive effective orifice area above 0.85 mm square body scope right. area is going to give a good long term results with good hemodynamics. Uh, so what, what are the different types of valves we have and uh, what are the benefits and... Uh, yeah. So the present really supraannular valves. valves which we have is uh, we have the Medtronic valve which is uh, the first valve that came as a supraannular valve. Then we have the Accurate Neo 2, which is a supraannular valve. And then we have the Hydra, which is a, again a supraannular valve. So these are three supraannular valves which we have available at the present moment. I'm sure the other in the pipeline, but each has a characteristic which would fit and use differently. And uh, in this context, uh, the, the, you can see a diff significant advantage of a supraannular valve over a balloon expandable valve in terms of effective orifice area. Sh should we apply this as well to the valve and valve, which we often see a, a small annuli? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I would say that in intuitively, and if you look at the definition wise also, the valve in valve where the surgeons have ended up putting a smaller valve, less than 23 millimeter, it 
constitutionally is a small valve area. So we need to put a, again supraannular where you get a bigger orifice area and the data would suggest that it is going to have a better hemodynamic parameters, the effective orifice area would be better. So I think you are right that we should think valve in valve annulus also as a, a small annuli subgroup. So in this particular population of small annuli and valve in valve, uh, we need to be very choosy on choosing a valve right. which gives a better effective orifice area. Absolutely. So among these valves, uh, you, you were talking about so many valves, so uh, which would be your preferred choice and uh, why? So uh, if I have a very tortuous anatomy and if I have a valve uh, area which is a lot of calcium and I need to get the valve down anyhow, so horizontal aorta, I would look for a more flexible valve which has a single spine and maneuvers easily. So one of them would be Hydra definitely because it has a single spine, it's very flexible, easier to go across. And second, I would look at having a marker which will help me position exactly. And third would be the design of the valve which can reduce the risk of PVL and also reduce risk of pacemaker. Again here, Hydra has a slight advantage because it doesn't have a out pouching like a corning glass. It is almost slightly tapered valve. So that really helps in deciding which valve to choose. The Hydra valve has now come with a new iteration. So can you tell us more about that? Uh, how to yeah, so the current generation, the new generation Hydra valve, which we call, which is from SMT, it's a good feature. First, they started with a very sleek nose cone where the crossability becomes very easy. Then second is its added advantage over the other like accurate Neo valve is that it can be easily retrieved. So you can, you know, sometimes in a small NLI, if the calcium is there, you might have to reposition. So retrievable valve is much better choice. And then they have got a good expensile features. And the again, you can, you know, reposition it. And then the, you know, detachment of the valve from the structure is also made more predictable and effective. So I think these are the features where the things will be good. And the other thing is that the coronary axis is also very good because the cell sizes are bigger. So I think these are the features which have made it more predictable and outcomes are also very good. And that would translate into good long-term outcome in these subsets. I thank you. I think the Hydra seems to be working well for these spite of complex yeah. subsets. So to summarize, I think today we want to focus that the anatomy really dictates the valve choice and the supraannular valve is a valve of choice for small anuli and or possibly valve and valve with small anuli. And when you use a supraannular valve, we get a better hemodynamics with a better gradient, low gradients and which translates to long-term valve durability. So it's very important to choose the right valve for the right anatomy when you decide on the valve. Thank you. Thank you. I agree.